Greetings and welcome to this episode of Everyday Enchantment. This is going to be an incredible episode because I have the guest, my guest, Richard Wilmore, and we are going to be talking about comedy and humor and creative, just creative projects and all sorts of things and how all of that can lead to a life of enchantment. So Richard, you can fill me in whatever I miss, but I'm going to do your, I'm going to do your bio right by saying, (laughs) if you don't know who Richard Wilmore is, your life is going to get infinitely richer and better um, after listening to this episode. And you're going to want to connect with him and all the socials and all the places because Richard Wilmore is a TV and radio personality. He is the former host, like just former host of the Richard (laughs) Wilmore show, which aired six years more than that. Six years. years. Wow. We're going to talk about that. All right. He also is the, tell me your official title, social media director. Oh, director of storytelling at Hearts and Art. Yes, I know. Which is a nonprofit, which is also an amazing organization doing things for people in the hospitals and putting artists. I love this blend of like healing and art and creativity. So I know we're going to talk about that today. And you are just an all around incredible human. You do make everybody's lives richer by being in it. I smile more, I laugh more, you're always, it is like my heart just smiles when I see you popping up or I'm reading something that you're doing or watching something that you're doing. So, and, and do you also have like another little side gig? You do some editing and producing. Oh, yeah, I hear I do it for podcasts. I don't know. Certain yeah. ones have hired it's me to do that. Ones. Yes. <laughs> it's a very it's a very prestigious list. Not everybody it, it gets it. <laughs> it is. Yeah. So if you're looking for a podcast producer, look no further because Richard is a the best of the best. And no, I sorry. say that with life experience to back it up. So we'll, we'll take it. Welcome. You and I, uh oh. These are like our favorite thing to do, have a conversation with each other. Yes. We try doing these on Facebook and all heck breaks loose when we try to do exactly. that on Facebook. So We have broken yeah. Facebook many times. Yes. We need to put in for the Guinness World Book of Records. <laughs> hey, how many times can you try to do a, a twosome on Facebook and, and, and break the, you know, break the internet? The sound barrier, I think, is what happened. Yeah, always. Yeah. So um, what am I missing about, what else do you want the listeners to know today about who you are and oh all the things? Um, well, when we, when we first started talking about this interview, I think we were talking about laughter and creativity and enchantment. And I think I have somehow put myself in the position where I get to play every day mm. and I have never felt, I've never been poor, but I've also never felt happier in my entire life and you know i love the more we play the more right life just expands flourishes whatever you want to call Mm -hmm. that tell me how you created a life where you again you almost i would think now you can tell me if i'm wrong on this but you give yourself permission to play and that is this beautiful pathway to you know creating a a life you love Um, Well, I started my talk show in 2016 in my basement Mm -hmm. and uh, in Maryland. And Stacey, if you go back and find find me on on the show, yes. (laughs) Uh, I think a couple of them. This might be true. (laughs) Yes. Um, And so that's what I sort of thought I wanted to do with my life. I I wanted to be a talk show host since I was like 10 years old. And so Mm -hmm. I was doing that. And Um, I moved to San Antonio, Texas and was going through a divorce and I was sad in my new little apartment all by myself. And I thought, you know what, I need to smile and I need like something to bring me joy. And so I took myself to a theater to see a play and I walked in and I knew someone who had worked, who worked at the theater. And she said, I want to introduce you to someone. And it was the founder of Hearts Need Art had a little booth there with a little handmade cardboard sign. And I thought, this woman is a joke. Like, what is she doing here? Um, But she told me the story of how they go into hospitals and they work with adults and we do art and writing and live music. And I thought, oh my gosh, I wish 
we had access to this. My dad got really sick when I was in second grade and spent years in and out of hospitals. Um, how great would that have been as kids to have this, as to watch, you know, to have something to do with, with your parents instead of talking about why you're in a hospital. Yeah. Um, so I started volunteering and then that rolled into, a, I was the first full-time employee for the organization. And I literally just get to play. I get to listen to live music every day and I get to make art and journal and write. And then I get to, on the other side of it, go host my show and meet amazing people who are doing uh, great, making great movies and albums and writing great books. And then I started doing social media for people because they mm -hmm. needed the help and I knew how to do it. So I got to create, spend my days creating stuff for that. And it's rolled into this whole, no matter what I'm doing, it's, it's creative and it, it, a day can fly by and I'm having so much fun doing what I'm doing that, that it doesn't even seem like work most of the time. I really, that's my goal for the entire planet, um, that we are really like, my mentor or one of my mentors, Martha Beck said, when I was in life coach school, there's two spaces, right, in, in, in terms of humans, rest and play. Mm -hmm. We're either resting or playing. And we've kind of created this category of work, which is not play and lots of us have, have experienced that and been unhappy it doesn't necessarily when we're working tap our creativity and, and it's interesting to me and i'm curious what you think about this a lot of people will say to me well i'm not an artist i'm not creative mm -hmm. I think everybody's creative. It Everybody. might not look like, you know, you go out and you paint a picture, you write a song or you make a movie, but whatever you're doing in your life is a creative, whatever you choose to put on your body is a creative expression of who you are and how you want to be in the world. I don't know. That's my take on being artistic and creative. I mean, not everything, well, nothing I have painted has been hung up. Most of it gets hung up on the walls of a garbage can is what I usually tell people when they're like, I can't do that. I'm like, you, you can do it. Yeah. You might not think it's good. And yeah. you know, the percentage of people who end up in a museum somewhere is very slim, but you can still create. We were creating when we were drawing on walls when yeah. we were two years old and we thought we were the best thing out there. Absolutely. Cause we weren't worried about it having to, to serve some purpose or no, we were expressing ourselves absolutely and that's the beautiful thing the expression and i you know i've read recently and i don't remember who said it i wish i remembered that so i could attribute it to whoever wherever i came across this but you know the world as i've been saying is going undergoing this big transformation and one of the things some somebody just said recently is that there's so much beautiful magical now i'm putting a little Stacey Flair on this quote, <laughs> but um, that there's so much great art coming through this, right? We've, we've put so much art into museums and all these other things, but there's, to me, I've always been like, well, is that the best? Like, oh, do we peak mm -hmm. as humans already? But I love that quote. And I, I think I was talking about it in another episode with another amazing artist. So you're going to have to check that out. That's Sarah Seidelman's episode about this idea that there is so much around self-expression when we take away the pressure or the expectation and we do it for the sheer fun of it. Yeah. Yes. What you did as kids. I mean, exactly. it, hey, the more we channel those that kid energy now, I actually think it will create lives that we're much more fulfilled by than whatever we've been thinking we're supposed to do. <laughs> I know. That reminds me of one of Ellen DeGeneres' like early um, stand-up specials where she talked about um, adults being kids and when did we stop playing tag? Like, when did we stop? And she goes, can you imagine if you walked on the street and just hit someone on the, on the shoulder and said, tag, you're it, and ran away? And <laughs> what that would spark and how much fun that would be if, yeah. if we did that as adults. Like, it's we're so, so afraid of what people think of us or we're not going to be good at something. Or uh, And I thought that, too. The first time I ever went to an art class with mm -hmm. a room full of patients, all cancer patients and me, mm -hmm. I took, we were painting something and I watched everyone else for the first like 20 minutes because I didn't want to, I had to see like where I landed in oh. the level of like who's good and who's bad. Yeah. Uh, and I, I that is one of my like 
very vivid memories of this job is coming out of that and thinking, Mm -hmm. oh, it doesn't matter. Like that is not at all what this is about. Because there were some beautiful things that would come out of a class from not from people who were not artists, mm-hmm. and then there was some not beautiful things. But yeah. everyone had fun, and and the connection you feel with other people who are creating, just for the joy of creating, is something special. It, it, I mean, and art wants to move through. It, like art doesn't have the same parameters that we put mm-hmm. on it, mm-hmm. and. Like, talk about blocking a life enchanted if you're worried about what everybody... Like, to me, enchantment gives you permission to do it your way and to experiment and have fun rather than thinking, oh, my gosh, I have to... You know, my art needs to look like this person's art or that kind of thing. Or, you know, even just laughter, like what we find... It's like, what if all of that, the more we tune into whatever our unique flavor is, how we express ourselves, what gives us joy in life, the more, again, we do feel like, I always think of enchantment as just like pure delight. And so you're right. You could have the, I could probably paint something today (laughs) that would be like, "Mm, maybe not go, but, but the process of it, Mm -hmm. right. Having fun, playing around, trying out. I don't know. I, it's funny you say this because I bought like a year or so ago during the pandemic, I bought, um, and I don't know the name of the company, but it was like, if you wanted to paint different things, they sent you all the materials like in a box and then you could watch a video. They would show you how to do it. Like I bought like flower, of course, flowers, tigers, my usual (laughs) enchanted fair. And it's sitting not far from where I, where I host this podcast is sitting not too far away. And I haven't done it. And I think Uh part of it is, well, first of all, just get in the space, right. Where you can just lay out all your things. But I think another part of it is like, well, what if I mess it up, right? What yeah. if I don't do it, right? And I think that, well, that's where the comedy comes in too, right? Being able to laugh and find the places in our lives where I, I think of comedy as being some of the most highest frequency energy, mm-hmm. even though most people probably think it's kind of lowbrow. I think when we can soften our whole bodies through laughter and make those connections with other people because most of the time we are laughing, not Uh, just by ourselves. Although I don't know, Richard, have you ever walked down the street and just like total fits of hysteria by yourself? Let's try that experiment see how it goes. (laughs) Yeah. Something happens. You see something that triggers you. It triggers that memory and suddenly you're hysterically laughing. laughing. That has happened to me before. Yes. And I'm, you know, there's probably some people walking by, but if we care less, we care less about the judgment, which who knows what people are thinking anyway, and more about our own delight. Like, what if we were more solely focused on that? Um, gosh, I don't know. The world would just, I don't, I just feel like that, that will aid in the world's transformation. Yeah. We all need to, to provide spaces for even strangers, like a safe space for strangers to be themselves. I think I don't know even know how this popped in my head, but I feel I don't like know. we're creating it, something new it, here. Come on, go. <laughs> but, but it made me think of my life, like almost like moving to Maryland when I used to live near Stacy, and Stacy and I became friends. That whole world in Maryland, I remember distinctly when I was moving there, thinking, "Okay, this is this is my fresh start." Of everybody who meets me here will know that I'm gay. Right. I remember thinking that because in Wisconsin, where I grew up, there were people who knew me out in the closet, out wow. of the closet, and then people who knew both. Like, you know, and I and I remember thinking, like, this is my time to really live how I always wanted to live mm. because I don't want don't care if people are judging me anymore. And I have no history with them. So this is all just me. And I remember putting myself out there when I got to Maryland trying to meet people mm-hmm. and thinking like, this is the life I can be proud of and how that changed. My show probably never would have started because I was afraid of, mm. well, what if people like don't like me? Mm. And then- yeah, you can't be a T, you know, you can't be a TV personality. <laughs> no. I think if you're, so you do, you have to confront that, right? You And yeah. I think just for anybody listening, if you want more, whatever joy, whatever we're calling this enchantment in your life, 
if you get into that space where you allow what you think, it's not even what actually may happen, but what we think mm -hmm. is going to happen. We're like in this imaginary realm that doesn't even exist and it completely blocks and shuts us down. Mm -hmm. I, I think to your point, the more we, I think we do it with ourselves first, right? The more we give ourselves permission to be who we are and to show, again, we start, I think we start kind of in a place where it feels safe, mm -hmm. but the more we just allow it to keep kind of expanding outward, then that gives permission. Not, not, you're not telling anybody else what to do, but you're just saying it's safe. It's safe to show up and be, yeah. you know, be who you are. How did that experience then affect your art? Like when you felt like you could really show up and be who you wanted to be, and then you were creating this show and doing all of these things, what did you find out then about your art as a result? I'm curious. I felt, I realized that I was holding myself back on my personality, on the things I was capable of doing. I was not doing certain things because I was afraid of, of, I didn't want one comment that would, you know, trigger like something from when I was a kid and getting teased and all that. So I, mm -hmm. I wanted it to be a super positive place for the people watching, but also for me. And when mm -hmm. I got to the point of realizing like the people who need it are going to show up. Like Ooh. I'm not going to have a million people watching who don't like me. They're not going to watch. They're going yeah. to turn the channel where the people, but the people who need it and the people who like me, that's who will show up. So what did you find about your community in the six years that you had the show? What, what were the community, like what, what, what were they looking for? Why did they show up? I'm curious what your impression of that is. I think people who were on the show were like me where they, knew that they were talented at something uh, because they were doing it, but didn't really know how or where to go to talk about it. And I gave mm -hmm. that space of like, I'm proud of you. I'm excited you're here. And I want to talk about anything you want to talk about because you're working so hard at mm -hmm. creating something um, and, and you don't get a, a, a way to do it. You know, like Tom Cruise could go on any show when he made mm -hmm. a good or bad movie and talk about it, but there are people doing amazing things and no one's talking about it. This is true. And I think, I don't know, one of the positive <laughs> side effects of social media and the internet and the, the world kind of all being connected is this idea that we can highlight things that maybe mm -hmm. would never have had space, right? Yeah. Um, in kind of modern tr traditional kind of modes of um, mass marketing or communication. The world, like the Justin Beavers, Beaver, Beaver of the world Beaver. would never have come into play, right? I always yeah. want to say Beaver instead of Beaver. I, it doesn't work. Really <laughs> anyway, my point is that, you know, you do, you do create a channel for that. And, you know, I think what has always set you apart as kind of your own uniqueness is you really do listen just as you want to be seen and, and, and heard. You offer that not only just to your friends and the people around you, but absolutely to your audience and the guests that you invite. And so I have to ask you, I know you've recently made an announcement that the show has kind of closed its final chapter for now. Yes. What brought you to that decision, I'm just, you know, as a coach, I kind of am always <laughs> curious when people make big decisions like that. It doesn't surprise me, but I'm very, very interested to hear, like, again, how did you know it was time to say, okay, this is a ending point for this? I spent 16 days in the hospital, not thinking I was going into the hospital. I was going for a doctor's appointment and ended up uh, in the hospital for 16 days. And the night I got there, the internet went out. And it was out for 14 of those 16 days I was there. So I had a lot of time sitting around thinking. And I thought, you know, I, it, it just, I had been thinking about it for a while, mm -hmm. uh, how I could do it. But I, I, a lot of it was, well, I need a space for these people to come to. Like mm -hmm. people will be on my show and come back and say, I want to, you know, I have this project. Can I come back on your show? I really liked being on it. You're fun, whatever. Um, but I thought I'm not having as much fun as I used to have. Mm. And I was, I'm having a ton of fun outside of the show mm -hmm. in my real life. Mm -hmm. And I thought I want to explore that. And I want to, I want to embrace how happy I am in life 
And I think my show was sort of a way, an escape for me in many ways mm-hmm. of the life I had mm. and was living and the marriage I was in, not, mm-hmm. he's not going to watch this, but like, you know, <laughs> right. like it wasn't it's an hard. awful marriage, but it, you know, it, it yeah. ended. It was. Absolutely. And, so that's what I realized was like, as much as well, that I became loved, a channel for you at that time. And yes, yeah. I needed a safe space again. And that show was, yeah was that safe space for me? Like, Mm -hmm. you know, so it just felt like it was time to move on. I still love creating and I'm producing things and editing and uh, doing all kinds of stuff still behind the camera. And that's also what I realized was I just love creating good content, quality Mm -hmm. content with people instead of my face being there. I would rather put your face up there, make it look beautiful for everybody to watch and listen to and that brings me just as much joy as standing there talking to someone so tell me what you think this is what i hear the coach in me hears it the friend of in me here all the things it's like life is fluid right there's a flow Mm -hmm. to life and the things that bring us joy something that really feels true and just just lights us up it doesn't always mean it's going to stay that way forever yeah. And can we be willing to be honest enough with ourselves saying this thing that I loved that I created doesn't as another guest of mine, Bridget um, said, and you're going to have to check out her episodes because it's going to come the following week <laughs> after Richard's talk about pinging, right? Your heart pinging you in a way that absolutely, again, following your pings, following those I always call it the breadcrumbs or the hotter, you know, the hot, cold game, right? Mm -hmm. If something that used to be on fire for you as joy is now kind of lukewarm, being able to, and it sounds like just being in the hospital, no inner, like two weeks of silence, not completely silent in the hospital, but you know what I mean, created that kind of container for you to be able to be curious and say, do I really want to be doing this anymore? And Again, also giving yourself permission, because I think a lot of people say, well, what does that mean about me if I decide, oh, I don't want to do this anymore? Mm -hmm. It's like people changing careers or people changing relationships, like people making transitions in their lives. So often it's like, well, can I be this new thing or can I end this in ways that, again, it kind of goes back to what do I think about myself? What are other people going to think about me? I think we're all in this like crazy river and we're moving all the time. And if you're basing your life now on what brought you joy 10 years ago and you haven't reevaluated or reflected, you're probably not getting a lot of enchantment these days. Maybe yeah. it, you used to, but if you're feeling like, oh, life feels a little blah to me, I have a feeling kind of tapping back in. And and not that I, I don't recommend a hospital stay for anybody, but- no. But the stillness or the getting quiet, I absolutely think is an important part for us to make the space for the reflection. Yeah. Yeah. Because I went through the like, well, does this mean that I failed? That, you know, I didn't end up hosting The Tonight Show yeah. and taking over. Although James Corden, I think, is ending his show. So there is I still room. That. There, hey. I mean, I'm not opposed to hosting a talk show. I'm just taking a yeah. break from mine. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, so I went through that too of like, well, what does this mean as me as 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 a talk show host? Isn't it like, you know? Yeah. Uh, but I then realized that it wasn't a failure. I, I was able to do amazing things with that show. And well, that really, it has changed so much. And I've learned so much from having that show that I can't be mad at the time I spent with it. And nobody's life is a straight line. Like if... Mm-hmm. Because I know if that's what you really want to do, you will wind up in James Court. Somebody's, you know, in the Richard Wilmore show. Um, and again, I would love to be a guest on your show, just plug no that at a time. Um, but there is no straight line. And I think, again, when people start to think about living a life that feels fun and playful, it's like this beautiful straight a to B and and what have you. It's like, no, we go backwards, we go sideways, yeah. like the Willy Wonka of um elevator. <laughs> Seriously. Yes. And I think create and he, to take it back and tell me what you think about this, but to take it back to creativity, when you're making art and you're just giving yourself permission to do it, 
I, I don't know. I don't know a lot about artists that like, do they think of what the finished piece looks like when I'm creating something, I'm, I'm just letting the energy move through me. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to make something be something. I'm just giving everything permission to be expressed. Yeah. And I think when we live a life like that, we are going to move and change and shift. And how well do we actually allow it for ourselves? And I think, again, that is you really want to tap into, you know, my oh hell yes life, allow the dips and the flows and the turns and the unexpected. Oh, I didn't think I would do that. And yet everything I've done has led me, you know, experience wise, life wise to, to me, I just think we're always, there's a beautiful quote that says the universe is always trading up. Like I say that to people all the time. And I tell them, you told me that all the time. <laughs> well, I got that from Daniel Laporte. Truth bomb, I think. I think that was where I first saw that. So to to, to attribute it correctly, but yeah, like again, everything just helps feed our lives, mm -hmm. and if we choose to see it that way, I, I know there's lots of us that are out there saying, "Oh, everything terrible is happening to me," and there are terrible things that happen to humans. I'm not. I don't want to skip over that part either. But again, instead of staying in that space how do we use art and humor and laughter? Like, it's like watching a black and white movie versus like you and I both love the wizard of Oz mm -hmm. when everything is in this beautiful technicolor. It's like, Oh yeah, that's the life. And that to me is music and art and all the things that enrich rather than just like, Oh, I could just go about my day in and out and kind of, turn all that off but what would be the point <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean that's that's what kind of my show ended up being it was like i have to go do another show like yeah. another interview and i was i was until the very end i was very excited to talk to everybody i still love talking to people because everyone's mm -hmm. stories are so unique and different well, you're a storyteller of course yeah yeah but it's everybody just, at the, it's gonna take a different form that's <laughs> true and everybody at the hospital while i was there kept saying how are you you're so not like a lot of the patients here. Like, you know, I was, but I was lucky that I was able to move around in my room and not be hooked up to IVs 24 hours a day. And I felt yeah. okay. Uh, but my favorite part was joking with the nurses and the people coming in. I had a ton of visitors and yeah. I had to do that. For, I had to get out of my bed every day. I made mm -hmm. myself do that. I made myself move. I made myself do some sort of art every day and not just sit there and watch TV and, and laugh as much as I could. Yeah. I made it's myself. Healing. Yeah. It's healing. And, and you know, that's a choice. It's living intentionally. And to me, it, it probably helped it not only you, but it helped everybody. Like I bet the whole hospital had this beautiful bump of energy yeah. because you were in it. And that ripple effect is something, again, it's not like you went in and go, Oh, I'm going to help the hospital, but by just being who we are and, and bringing that kind of joy to our own lives, then it does, it does kind of, it's contagious in the, <laughs> In the best way, a hospital. I was right? literally, yeah, I was literally <laughs> knocked on the door from random. I heard about you because what I was yeah. going through was super rare, and like they didn't yep. know what was happening. So I'd, I heard about you, and I heard you had your window painted. Can I come in and look at it? Yeah, you can come in. And then I yeah. tell them the story because Hearts and Dark came in and painted my window for me, and mm -hmm. um, it was an interesting. When I, they found out that I was leaving, everyone was like, "No, can you stay a couple more days?" I'm like, "No, I cannot. Thank you. I've <laughs> definitely overstayed my welcome, and I hope I never see you again." It reminds me, that reminds me of this idea of wherever you go, who, whoever we are at the heart of us, you're taking it, you know, whether our title is TV, you know, host or whatever, a coach, whatever, fill in all of the things, who we are at the heart of us and what we want to do and how we want to be in service of the planet. Like we don't need a job title or some mm -hmm. kind of name in order to be doing it kind of, it oozes out of us. Maybe that's the wrong choice of verbs. But it just, a lot of, it's been oozing out of me a lot lately. Yes. It comes out of us naturally. Yeah. And I think that if we learn how to trust that, and I hear you saying like giving yourself space, 
putting in that intentional movement and laughter, like those, that's like what I would call the love, the love lube of enchantment, mm -hmm. right? If you feeling disenchanted in your life, go out, take a walk, move your body, get on a YouTube or get on your favorite, watch your favorite movie that makes you laugh yeah. and just shift the energy. You're not trying to fix anything. You're just inviting that energy. It's like remembering, oh yeah, I know yeah. this frequency. And my body remembers how to, again, I think it loosens up every time we're laughing or we're I don't know, whatever we're doing with our body or our minds or our hearts when we're creating some kind of, again, I think everything really is art. Our lives are art. This podcast is art in its yeah. own way. Um, and so, yeah, the less rules we have about what it needs to look like or how it needs to be, I think the more free and peaceful we'll feel. And that, sorry, can anybody else hear Dr. P? Yeah. <laughs> Sound like he just came in from like oh he was yeah he's, himself out. he's shaking himself out so uh, I don't know if we'll edit that out but Let's if see. not how good of an editor you have um, <laughs> Doctor P's little ear flap in there agreeing <laughs> that um, yeah it's, there's just and and the truth uh, like I also hear really loudly what you're saying right now too is is being truthful with yourself mm -hmm. will always keep you connected to that those energies and that joy too. Well, I think figuring out what works for you, you know, not everybody wants to paint, not everybody wants to learn how to play the drums or wants to be a writer or a runner mm -hmm. or, you know, like figuring out what your art form is that does all of those things to you. And it's okay to say, mm -hmm. oh, I tried, I went to a painting class and I didn't like it. So I'm mm -hmm. going to go, maybe, maybe just going to a museum is where you find your piece. Yes. You know, you don't have to necessarily make it. Ingesting art is also has health benefits. Like going to the theater, just sitting mm -hmm. in the audience has, there are studies that will prove that that's actually beneficial to your health. So- And you I find it inspiring if I, watching other people do what they do mm -hmm. best, I get ideas for myself, yes. not necessarily that I want to go out and, I mean, I love music, but <laughs> nobody really wants to hear me sing. But when I listen to music, I get really, really mm -hmm. inspired. And so um, you're right. Just being in the energy of these different frequencies can yeah. just um, uplift us in ways yeah. that, again, the world, we need some uplifting. There's definitely been a very, very kind of heavy energy uh, the last couple of years. And, and again, not to skip over what's happening, but there's also the space for both things, mm -hmm. for us to feel the things that are going on and to bring in all like the art and the joy and the laughter and, and that too. They don't have to be either or uh, choices. We can, we can have them. And they're actually probably going to help us navigate the, the yep. trickier things. Exactly. Like, exactly. All right, my beautiful friend. Well, you're going to have to be on again because again, we could talk about all this stuff for forever. Uh, um, you know where to find me. I, I do know where to find you. Tell me if people are listening and they just wanted, you wanted to inspire them to do one thing based on our kind of meandering through all of these topics today, what would you encourage people to do? What would mm. you want them to take away? Take, take five minutes, get out a piece of paper and just write. It doesn't have to make sense. It doesn't have to be, they don't even have to be sentences. Just write for five minutes and see mm. what comes out of it. Okay. And if you're really stuck, then you need just like start with a prompt. Like, I don't even know, but like, I, I find like even three words can get me right. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. today I feel, and then I just yeah. go yeah. or yeah. the wind that, you know, it was windy out or whatever. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be some big profound. No, it doesn't. Thing. Right. It doesn't have to be anything. <laughs> I call it word vomit, which some people think is gross, but it's just like, you know, even like taking your shirt, trying to describe your, what you're wearing as in detail, as much as you can, mm. like see how, see if when you're reading it, you can feel how it feels or, you know, like, you know, exactly the shade that it is or how the fit is like, see if you can describe that to someone. I love it. I love it. 
Well, th yes. this is the path to enchantment, or at least one yes. of the paths. So if you love this episode, you can find Richard all over the place. I will post all his links out on social media in the show notes. And if you want to talk to us about this episode, because we love to jam about these kinds of <laughs> topics, come over to my free Facebook group, Everyday Enchantment, and you can get in on this conversation. And if you are looking to get started in this space, right? There, sometimes we just don't know. Maybe you take a class, maybe you hire a coach, but you do something to, again, give yourself that space to really come back to that question of who am I, which I love that mm -hmm. you are asking, like, what do I love? What really lights me up right now? And using that as a guide in this very interesting world in which we live. All right, my friend, thank you for being thank one you. of the most, you know, favorite people on the planet. <laughs> oh, I love you. I love you too. And for all the listeners out there, have a beautiful rest of your day. Bye, everyone. That's it for now, loves. Thank you for tuning into this episode. Get all the juicy details and links we've mentioned in the show notes. If learning more about how you can use your own enchantment to live a oh hell yes life, come get your own coaching session with me by going to stacyandon.com and signing up for my homepage. And as always, come chat with me about this topic and all things enchantment in my Facebook group, everyday enchantment. See you on the flip side.